guys, it's Kira and welcome back to another video. I am in a slightly different location to normal because today we have a very, very exciting video, but also kind of scary because there is so much work to be done. But essentially, in case you missed my last vlog, Jay and I are moving out next week, which means that this bookshelf, this incredibly packed and completely unorganized bookshelf, has to be basically taken apart, put in boxes, and I thought this would be an excellent opportunity to do a massive bookshelf, spring clean, and unhaul a lot of books. Because although we are gonna have more space for books, which I'm so excited about, I also want to make sure that I'm only taking books that I love, that I either would want to reread again, or love the cover, or you basically just books that bring me some kind of joy. So I'm trying to be a bit Marie Kondo with this and essentially be a little bit brutal. And if a book isn't one that I loved, isn't one that I think I'm gonna reread and basically doesn't bring me any kind of joy, then it's going on the unhaul pile. So without further ado, this is gonna be basically bookshelf organization, book unhaul, bookshelf spring clean, and basically just taking apart every single book that I own. So I've got a cup of tea to power me through and let's get on with it because there are lots of books to go through and Jay will be popping in and out as well to organize his bits of the bookshelf. So big gulp of tea. Let's start from the top, I suppose. Now there's been so many instances of us trying to organize these shelves. And so this top shelf was initially the shelf that we use for collections and hardbacks but as we can see here that's not the case anymore so the first thing i'm seeing is the love square which i tried to read in december i technically put this on my march tbr but right as of now i'm gonna put this on the goodbye pile so let's go first book down <laughs> okay the queen's gambit that's going on the keep pile but i'm actually going to put this to one side because i'm putting a special pile aside for books that i think i want to read very soon and this book is one of them so i can go there and then we have equally the goldfinch which is another one that i want to read very very soon mm -hmm. And we also have Little Darlings, which I definitely want to read. It's a thriller. I've not read it yet, so I'm putting this one in the box, ready to bring to the new house. Box. How exciting. <laughs> okay. The Lord of the Rings box set. That's obviously a keeper. I do love this little series. And don't know if I'm going to reread it because honestly, quite a challenge to read it in the first place, but I do love this little it's collection. Nice so that goes there. Right. The Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye to the Hunger Games. I just don't see myself rereading this one and I'm sure that in the hands of another probably younger reader mm -hmm. this will be much loved and appreciated. So good condition stuff. It's good condition. I literally read these last year, so they're in pretty great condition. I enjoyed them a lot, but I just don't think I'll reread them. It by Stephen King, mm -hmm. definitely keeping, but won't be reading until probably September or October, so that can go straight in the box. Okay, The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. Read that last year. Really enjoyed it, and I think I that you it. would like it. So, did you read it already? I read it. Oh my god. <laughs> right, well, I'll keep that there. I honestly was of the belief that you had not read it yet. No, we read it back to back. Totally didn't even think about that. Okay, Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood. Yeah. I've read it. I read it in a row. You're my 24 hour readers on. Not too bad. Ah, see, this is where the decisions come in. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna keep, keep this it. one, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it, but what I'm not gonna keep is Bunny mm. by Mona Arwad. I really, really, really didn't like this book. This one's very divisive and I was on the side of people who don't really get it, didn't like it, didn't love it. So don't want more of it, I'm gonna get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well I think it's not gonna be too difficult to guess what's happening with these guys. Venom. Shut <laughs> up. Normal people and conversation with friends, basically like my holy grail. Mm -hmm love them, would sell my soul for these books, so they stay. Okay. The Switch by Beth O'Leary. Love, love, love it. And while we're here, might as well get the flat share as well. Absolutely love these and I'm so, so excited for her new book, The Road Trip, which is coming out next month. With that in mind, I may actually put these on the gonna read soon pile, because I, so I think I might do a reread of Beth O'Leary. That'll be fun. Works. That'll come out and there'll be a hardback and you'll actually have a set of free hardbacks. I know, I'm always got, like, like late. I'm usually back. so late to collections that a softback. You are like the faceless man of this video so far. I'll pop in a second. Right, next up we have Oof, Harry Potter. Uh, 
the Gigantosaurus Harry Potter collection. So, I was previously collecting the Harry Potter house editions, mm. but I've since realised that I don't really care enough about it or want to buy any more of these books. It's a long time to wait to wait for the whole collection. It's a long time to book. I also don't really want to, to be... <laughs> Did I say it's that? a long time to book. It's <laughs> a long time to wait for a book. And I also don't really want to give any more money mm-hmm. to the series. So, essentially, <laughs> not going to be buying this. So I think I'm going to get rid of these three mm-hmm. house editions, as well as the Harry German Potter one. und der Stein der Weissen, because <laughs> I clearly overestimated uh-huh. my German language ability. Yeah. So I'm going to put those in the... Auf Wiedersehen. Auf indeed. However, I do still like Harry Potter. It's my favourite film series mm-hmm. ever, all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to keep the other editions that I have, which I have got a video on my channel from ages ago, which is essentially a, quite a mismatched collection because I have some of them with these colour yeah. covers and then the other ones have black and white, but they all have like matching spines. And so don't want to get rid of all of my Harry Potter books, but I figure one collection is more than sufficient for yes. my Harry Potter needs so they can go in the box however i do think i'm going to get rid of the two fantastic beast ones because they are just like scripts and i haven't read them don't think i will read them they look i like the gold but it's like if it's just a, a play style yeah it's just like, like i'm not going to read them so i don't really saw the second film. um yeah we did, did we? i didn't see the second film you definitely watched the second film on tv that. you did I saw the first film. no you definitely saw the second film I saw the first you film. saw the second film i'm sure of it because i didn't get to see it at the cinema so you have to have seen it we, we, both have, seen we it. have actually seen it <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we haven't <laughs> um well okay next series is another oh. huge pile yeah. of game of thrones go. oh really it's signed mm. I'm keeping it. All it's right. signed. All right. uh, but yeah, we've got the whole Game of Thrones. Well, actually, there's still actually a couple of missing. I've not yeah. got the whole series. And then we did get the Fire and Blood. That's so dusty. Fire and Blood <laughs> one from when we went to London in 2019 to see George R. R. Martin do a talk. And it is, I believe, signed. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, yeah. There he is. That's a fancy signature. Yeah, so I'm keeping that because, you know. Although I did get some strawberry juice on it on the way home <laughs> from London, so... Might as well keep it in there. Exactly. Okay, that's going to get organised later. Oh, the books right. filled up quite quick, haven't they? I know, there is already... So- okay, so let's go through hard backs. Go for it. Saw Kill Girls. I like, I'm going to keep it. Keep it. The Wicked King is a no, Mm -hmm. as is the Queen of Nothing. I've literally got no idea where the Cruel Prince is. I think I got the Cruel Prince in paperback, so that's somewhere else. But essentially, I enjoyed reading this series. It was a lovely trilogy, but will I reread it? Doubtful. Okay, the guest list and... The Hunting Party, both by Lucy Foley. Absolutely love. I think Lucy Foley is my favourite thrillery author. I just absolutely love her books, so absolute keeps. Confessions of Franny Langton. I bought this ages and ages and ages ago, and it is meant to be really good. I have not read it yet. Still got a receipt in it, so when did I buy it? That'll be interesting Gosh. to find out. Transaction date is... Does it say when it was? For save it. Um, wow. When? 11th of the 5th, 2019. So, oh, no, two years. yeah. Two yeah. years ago. Um, actually, I don't need that receipt, <laughs> obviously. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to keep that because I do want to read it. I just, I'm not a huge lover of historical fiction, so it's not one that I find myself reaching for, but I will try at some point. Next up, The Grace Year. Haven't read this one yet, but I've heard really good things about it. This one was sent to me actually by Molly and it was one of her favorite books from last year. Her channel is Mind of Molly. And um, 
it's meant to be really great for people who like dystopians. It's compared to things like The Handmaid's Tale, which is one of my favourites, as well as another one that I read recently, which was Outlawed. So I definitely think I'll enjoy this when I eventually get around to reading it. Next up is Love and Other Carnivorous Plants, which I definitely enjoyed, but equally don't think it's going to be one that I reread. Yeah. So we're going to be brutal today. We've got get to be rid brutal. Of, get rid if we're not oh, going to reread. Oh, you've got someone on the back says... No, I think, no, I think it's just a note from before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> next up we have... Next up we have... <laughs> Oh god, it's already getting to my head. I'm Carry so on. hot right now. Okay, Mexican Gothic, one of my favourite books from last year. Mm. Incredible. It's a keep. Definitely a keep. Okay. Now you're second out of the box. I'm assuming you look. put them on top. When... L look! Mm -hmm. I'm going to sort the box out when I sort the box out, okay? Mm -hmm. The Outsider by Stephen King. This was the second ever Stephen King book that I read. Damn. I read The Shining, and then I read this, and I absolutely loved them both, and that was the start of... My love of Stephen King. That's a love heart, by the way. I understand. Um, I really like it. So, great, great pick. Great book. Good work, Steve. Um, okay. In the spirit of The Hunger Games, a songbird of... The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I remember when I filmed my reading vlog for this one, I had to film the introduction so many times because I could not, yeah. for the life of me, say the title of this book it's too wordy about the songbirds and snakes about the yeah. songbirds and snakes but yeah so <laughs> songbirds songbirds and snakes um look, it's a good book i enjoyed it but if i'm not going to read the hunger game series again i'm certainly not going to read this one again mm. so yeah goodbye oh yeah that's my job okay this book scares Ooh. me. I was gifted this one. I put it on my wish list so i really only have myself to blame. There's so many but... books that i that I hear about all the time, like, yeah. you know, titles, and then, like that one that you just had in there a minute ago, the red code one, this one, I've never even heard you mention. So. No. I haven't read it, though, and it was gifted to me, and I, I feel like um, I'm going to give it a try. I've never read anything by this author before, Sarah J Mass. Obviously, most of you watching will know that she is very popular with booktube mm. people, but um, I haven't read anything by her, so... In the box. In the box. Okay. <laughs> Ninth House by Lee Bar, do go no. Do go no. Do go no. I like, that. I like do go no. <laughs> do go no. Okay. Um, news of nightmares. I will keep. What really upsets me about this one, and what I may consider doing in the future, is getting rid of this one and getting the paperback because the um, Strange the Dreamer copy I have, which is obviously the first book in this duology, is in paperback, and so I would rather they match. But for right now, I'm obviously not going to repurchase it. So gonna keep this one for now Pause. okay next up we have oh that's mine jay's book <laughs> munich by I robert don't to harris, do with that. harris this was one of the first that was this, the this is the book jonathan oh my god you're in this was <laughs> the first book i ever read i mean the first book you ever read out of choice you didn't you didn't read books look how big the writing is yeah uh, I guess for nostalgia's sake, I got to keep it, don't I? Because um, I think so. That's a special book. It is a special book. It's that just was the book that book. kickstarted right. who you are right now. I ain't got my right box now. yet, but I'll just put it down. Oh, I don't know. Put it on this pile. Yeah. Over it. yeah. Right. I'll scooch okay. out because I'm in the way a little bit. I'll come back in when it's. Bye my turn. then. Um, okay. <laughs> Next up, another firm, 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 <laughs> firm, firm <laughs> favorite. Firm favorite. Firm <laughs> Some favourite is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine yeah, by Gail like Honeyman. Possibly along with the two Sally Rooney's my favourite book ever. So mm -hmm. love that for me. Yep. Okay. With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I still need to read, but I definitely want to read this one. So in it goes. In the box. The one that got away by Simon Wood is a thriller that I definitely want to read, so in the box. Are five boxes going to be enough is the question. I'm starting to think that potentially not. Like when We're we, not through the first one When yet. we bought five <laughs> boxes, I was like, yeah, totally going to have enough space. But I do think that a lot of the books on this top shelf were definitely going to be keepers. I think the lower, lower we get, yeah. the lower we get, the less we're going to want to keep. So Hopefully. last time standing, this one was sent to me by my friend Grace and she sends really good books. Mm -hmm. Typically, she sent me 
the hunting party by Lucy Foley, so I'm going to keep this one and give it a read because she has yep. good taste. Nice. Thanks, Grace. Thank um, you, Grace. Okay, The Secret She Keeps. This one is a thriller, which I really enjoyed. However, I just don't think that I'm going to reread it on account of it being a thriller because I do think, generally speaking, with thrillers, the fun of it is, like, figuring out the twist and, like, what's mm. going to happen in the mystery. And so I feel like this would do great for... It's like any charity shop, yep. people would love these books. So, all right, it's goodbye, but not because I didn't like it, just because what's the point in rereading Once it? Once you've done one, oh, should yeah, mind, okay. Daisy Jones and the Six, definitely enjoyed, and not my favorite Taylor Jenkins read, but definitely one to keep. Okay, Hot Milk by Deborah Levy, haven't read, but definitely want to read. Nice. I think I'm gonna like this one. Um. The Time Traveller's Wife by Audrey Nefenega. Again, haven't read, definitely want to read. Ooh, has that got like a weird cover on it? I think it's to like... Ooh. It's like blurry because yeah. time travel. Because time travel. Because time travel, yeah. Okay, we then have another edition of Normal People, a Waterstones exclusive, which I was obviously unable to resist. Uh-huh. Because it's lovely. Didn't know you have that, but that's fine. Got it from London. Okay. Um, it is quite nice. It is it. very nice. And then The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein, I want to read. So I'm going to keep it. Okay. And you can't stop me. All right. Um, okay, <laughs> next up we have... The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Love, love, love it. This box, I've been, I've done such done? a bad job. I'm going to have to pause in a minute and just like organise. I've done such a bad job of this so box. Bad. Okay, next up we have two, three, in fact, three of my favourite books from 2020. The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin, Educated by Tara Westover, and A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Absolutely love all three of these books. They're so so, 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 so good. So, 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 so. So, 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 Two. Stefan. Stu, Stu Steves. Two, Stephen. Oh, my God. Look at the marks on the wall. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Look at the mark there. Oh, that's so gross. That is gross. Okay. Two Stephen Kings I haven't read yet. The Bazaar of Bad Dreams, which is a collection of really short stories. And then The Green Mile, which I really want to read soon, because I think this is going to be so good. So that's that next up we have the copy of the great gatsby which mm, i read OG. in sixth form when i was 16 it's got all my annotations in i'm gonna keep that one on the basis of nostalgia's sake okay. um because you know it's cute very cute next up we have the bhagavad gita mm. which is a ancient text um I studied for my yoga teacher training and though it was interesting to study it's not going to be something mm -hmm. that I revisit or want to reread mm -hmm. so I'm gonna hand this over yep. and hopefully someone else finds it and gets some useful information I'm sure somebody will next up we have the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo mm -hmm. absolute masterpiece yep. as <laughs> everyone agrees then we have the wicker light by Mary Watson I yep. enjoyed this one this was a sequel or companion novel to her other book the wren hunt mm -hmm. which again I enjoyed but I don't think I'm going to reread, and so I'm going to pass this one on Ooh. to the future owner, whoever they may be. Followers by Megan Angelo. Absolutely hated this book, so that's, <laughs> that's a goodbye from me. And then, on the contrary, The Memory Police was really mm, interesting, so this is going to stay. Nice. So that is shelf number one. Of I think I need to take five. a... Yeah, five. Um, I'm going to take a brief interlude to organise that box, and which two I... Boxes. Yeah, and make two more boxes because I did a terrible, terrible, terrible job. But that's one shelf down. Cheers to that. Join us again for shelf two. Okay. We're back. Back for take two and shelf two. And I'm joined now by my lovely co-host. The handsome, the wonderful. Jay. Jay, absolutely. Because now that top shelf was basically solely mine. Whereas yes. from here on out, it's kind of a big, Some old, dotted in there. big old mixture. And actually, I feel like you've... To say that I had books from like spanning mm. years, yes. and you've only been reading for a couple yes. of years, you've done quite a good job of building quite, I like quite to the collect. collection. Yes. So, without further ado, let's just jump straight on into it. So, well, I'm currently reading that, so I'll put that one to one side. Oh, really? Well, I'll, I'll put Munich in there to start off my box. Okay, and then next up for me, we have the Middle March book by George Eliot, which mm -hmm. I think. Is obviously going to go to one side because I'm currently hosting a Middlemarch buddy read. So is this the 
pile for books. This is the pile okay. for books that I need easy access yep. to, so okay. I off to one side. Oh, next up, a very recent read, but a new favourite. We went to the woods by Kate Dolan Leach. Absolutely loved this book. It was so interesting. Like, I did a full reading vlog on this, so you can check that out if you're interested, but it was such a cool dystopian, utopian, commune, Which is it? Cult. Dystopian and utopian? Well, all dystopians are based on the premise of utopia, like they're trying to create like this okay. new way of life. But this one, I think, falls more into the category of utopia because it was a small group of friends trying yeah. to create this commune. Okay. And it was kind of like the transition from their perfect utopia into to a dystopia. dystopia. Whereas I think so most dystopias both. start after mm -hmm. this it's turned okay. into a dystopian. So I love it. It was good. It was just such a unique take on the genre, I thought. So let's go. Dead Souls. Oh, that's mine. Yep, yeah, obviously keeping Dead Souls by Gogol. Gogol. Um, okay. Gosh, there's so many books. I actually feel quite daunted by this whole prospect. Okay, I'm just going to grab a few. Right. Oh, let's <laughs> Oh my god. Please don't get crushed by books. I okay. I was so. worried he was going to jump in one of the empty boxes. Oh, that would be so funny. <laughs> no, I was so not pretty funny. Do it <laughs> okay, so next up we have All About Us by Tom Allen. I read this one in my, in fact, these, <laughs> hold these. Yep. I read hold. these three books in a Valentine's 24 hour readathon, and I'm going to get rid of them all. So, All About Us really was a nice, fun romance, but because it was just like a very surface level fun romance, I can't see myself rereading it. Same goes for Opposite of All Waves. I really liked this one, and the reason that I want to give this one away is so that someone else can find it, because I really enjoyed it, but I know what happens and therefore probably won't reread it. <laughs> and then... Oh, that was a good catch. <laughs> and then wow. finally, Trust Exercise by Susan Choi, which was the only book from this 24-hour readathon that I didn't like at all, really. And so definitely not rereading it. And it doesn't spark any joy for me. So that's on the, the goodbye, goodbye forever pile. And then we Holly have... Holly Bond, how do you like me now? How do you like me now? Oh. I'm going to get rid of that. And then it ends with us by Colleen Hoover. I'll keep this one. Ooh. Yeah. Four down, one in. Yeah, exactly. Okay, what's next? Okay. Oh. There's a few of you now. Okay. Not a few of you, a few of yours. <laughs> Alright, have I read all these? Lolita is a keep. Robinson Crusoe. I read that right. Yeah, yeah. keep. <laughs> you tell me. Country Doctor Snowbook. Keep. Keep. That was in your favourites, right? Yep. Yeah. Heart of a Dog. Keep. That was a close favourite. And The Leopard is a keep. Interesting. I've noticed so far that you've not gotten rid of anything. So that's interesting. Yep. Um, okay. Oh, I feel like I'm about to fall over. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Flowers in the Attic. I was sent this one by Hannah, who I did a live show on her channel back when we were doing the Rebecca read along. She mentioned this book as really interesting and she sent it to me. And I haven't read it, but I want to. So that goes in the coming to the new house with us box. Moving house as well. Yes. Okay. Ooh. Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. Do you ever want to read this no, one? No. No, okay. Well then, I would just like to formally apologise to my fellow mm. Dark Academics book club hosts because we read this one together in November, I think, and everyone else loved it. And I'm particularly sorry to Emma and Mary, who I know really, really love this book. To me, it's just not the one. I didn't like it, and therefore... You hated it. I actually did hate it, yeah. I felt like the pressure yeah. in that live show, because everyone loved it, and I yeah. did not love it, but... Es loca es. Es loca es. <laughs> and I'm just going to say goodbye, farewell, hopefully I'll see you again. It's okay. Nice I've said es loca es. I know. Next. Okay. In the Time We Lost, really not a good romance book. So I, it's a shame because I love the cover. It's just so like festive Sparkle. and yet not good. So okay. goodbye. The Truants by Kate Weinberg. I really like this one. Great like dark academia style. Yep. Ooh, that's a very neat. I like that style of box. Thank pattern. you. And then If It Bleeds by Stephen King. It 
pains me to say that I'm getting rid of this one because I so wanted to love it. Like I said, I love The Outsider and this is a follow-up book to The Outsider or so I was Sneaky led marketing. to believe. Sneaky so marketing. I was led to believe. There's nowhere on this front of cover or this blurb that suggests that this is not a novel. But as it turns out, this is a collection of four novellas, one of which is If It Bleeds, the follow-up to The Outsider. And there's just four other rando stories in there that I didn't really enjoy and I was just so disappointed to have been misled like this so didn't love it bye 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 <laughs> okay do we go first yeah take it away jay all right so i have found in the street by patricia highsmith good book good book now i don't really know what to do because i probably would consider getting rid of that but then i have so many similar covers this is where the part of me goes wrong because if i buy books it's often part of a collection so it's like what do i do in this situation what do you think i should do should I just read them and dump them when I'm done with them? Probably, Ooh. right? I don't know. I don't think I'd read that again, though, to be honest. If I'm is being it the serious. Is with, like, a thriller? Because those are thrillers and mysteries, If I'm being serious, right? I, don't th- I do love it. Very pretty. I don't know if you can really see. It's quite a cool... It's a very cool cover, but I'm like, yeah. would I read it again? Is it just taking up space? I think space? that is the case with a lot of thrillers and mysteries, yeah. because... I like the Ripley's, and they are also really good, but it's just... It was a fun story, but it's just like, would I read that again? Probably not. Probably not. Well, so, you know what to do. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Let's everyone give Jay a round of applause because he's not. Alright, I've not read This Sweet Sickness, but I'm going to do the same once I've read that. Yeah, so it's coming for now. Yes. Great expectations at staying, beautiful. Oh, let's just put that to one side there to okay. pack it with all the other. Recent reads. Oh, no. soon to be read. No, 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 no. Um, oh! Russian, no. Penguin Deluxe Classic. Penguin Deluxe Classic. Wow, that was hard to grasp. And then we've got another Patricia Highsmith right here. Love it. Deep Water. Not read that yet either. And probably would do the same because this is a... I've got no others in this similar collection to that. (laughs) Therefore, it's useless. It's useless to me. Hold no value. Okay, next up we have another copy of The Great Gatsby. One of many, but I love this one. So that obviously comes. Okay, Um, that's your box. I didn't want to put that in my box. It's going in your box. Oh. Oh, that box. That's my box. Okay, next up we have The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, which I have not read yet, but this is such a well-talked about book and I think I'd enjoy it, so that one is coming. And then another favourite of mine, The Two Lives of Lydia Bird, obviously also coming with us. Right, got your next one here, bud. Okay. Ah, another copy of The Great Gatsby. Oh, this one. That is. This one. Ah, yeah, this one is the one. Look at that. It came from the wonderful... Shakespeare and Company in Paris, absolutely beautiful. And I just love this one because it's obviously not the original, but it's got the same cover as the original, which I love. So, I <laughs> don't know why that was so theatrical. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to read this. Best friends, Isla and Sophie made each other a promise one year and never split life passing by. Years later, Isla's in love, living abroad and fulfilling her dreams, but for Sophie, things haven't turned out the way she was expecting and she hasn't achieved any of the things she and Isla talked about. And then, in one sudden moment, life irrevocably changes for both women. That actually sounds quite interesting. I'm gonna... If you've not read it, keep have a guy. Yeah. An Island Christmas. We love, love, love it. <laughs> and then... I mean, that's an obvious keep right there. Oh, yeah. One of my all-time favy faves. Perhaps a big wallflower. And I thought we were coming up with so many cringy phrases throughout this book. But book. Come on. <laughs> and I also seem to be replacing every other word for the word book. Okay, so this one also... Also. W- haven't read yet. Things my mother told me. So. All book. White Lies... Just read this one. It was a thriller and I absolutely loved it. That actually went up in my most recent vlog, but in the same vein as the other thriller that I got rid of, um, The Secret She Keeps, I'm going to get rid of this one just because I know the twist, so I think someone else will get more enjoyment out of it than I will because I already know. Okay. My one next, Empire of the Summer Moon. Is this non-fiction? Uh-huh. My wow. only non-fiction. No, uh, I guess, maybe. Like H, 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 H. Could maybe oh, be yeah, yeah, yeah. This one is for my second quarterly review Ooh. when that comes up. So that's March to June reading yeah. material right there. So nice. I might, you know, it's a one-off. So when I'm done, I might get rid of it, depending on how much. But you that. definitely want to read it. So uh-huh. yeah. Okay. Next up, we have quite a collection, and I believe this collection is going to go in my need easy access section because this is the entire Bridgerton book series. I've read the first book, but I'm hoping to read the other ones potentially in a 24 hour readathon style oh challenge. God. So, easy access is what we need for this little collection. Okay. I'm jumping. Okay, right. <laughs> 
Daphne du Maurier, The Breakthrough. Um, I mean, it's so small, I might as well bring it. But I'm going to put that to one side because I want to just slot that in somewhere. In fact, oh, right. that was nice. <laughs> okay. Now, this is a lovely cover of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, but I hate that it's a different size to normal books because it just makes life difficult. I'm going to slot that there. That works. And then we have The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, which I have been intending to read for like the last six months. But I will read this soon at some point, I'm sure of that. And on that... I've got the next one. Wait a second. <laughs> I just wanted to put um, The Night Circus also... Look what you've done. I've made a terrible mistake. Oh, I've done. The Night Circus also by Erin Morgenstern in this pile just so that they are together. Best Next you've got this absolute beast. beast of a book. Copy of Emma. Look how beautiful. I think my hair is actually like expanding in size as we do <laughs> because of the heat of the room. I feel the heat as well actually. It's so hot. Right, I might put that some. That's not going to stay there but I think because it's like an awkward size I'm just going to slot that somewhere. The Adventures of Tom Bombadil. I'm going to have to keep this because I'm doing a live show on it in That is probably April. a good idea. So, again, I'm going to just pop that to one side because it's an awkward size. I wish, wish book manufacturers would just like... One size one or size, two. Please. One hardback size, one... Paperback, paperback size, size, yeah. Okay, Animal Farm by George Orwell. Love that book. Great. Poe. Is that the one from uh, Edgar Tally Allen. No. <laughs> um, not the one from Tally Dubbies. And I will get rid of this because I am not a poetry person. I got this for the Rory Gilmore readathon that I did last summer. Yeah. Um, oh, same as Howl by Allen Ginsberg. Now I've got two books by J. Gotham D. Gotham so. Oh, yeah. We have two copies of The Catcher in the Rye. Obviously, going to Which one's the one with the nut in it? Is it all it's one? this one, yeah. It's from 19. 19- 58 Damn. it says roger from mum and dad with our love xmas 1958 that's crazy that's pretty cool and it was only published in um 1951 so it's like Damn, that's crazy. yeah pretty cool so i love that and then this is my it's original copy well. of yeah that's not old <laughs> that's fun uh i don't even know what this is um wide sargasso sea by jean reese i will keep that one because Meant to be quite interesting, um, like a spin off of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Yep. What? It was just a funny way of saying it. <laughs> all right. Next. Well, they're all okay. still keep that there. Is that another Pride and Prejudice? Yeah. How many copies of Pride and Prejudice do you have? I might get rid of this one. I might. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of this There's one. There's another one here, I can see. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of this copy of Pride and Prejudice because as Jay's pointed out, I own. We have at least many. four. We have at least four. Copies and of I'm also gonna get another one because I want the one that goes in this collection. So, <laughs> yeah. Why these are so small as well? They're very really cute though. Okay. Where are we going next? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> Russian classics. What do we have? Anna Karenina and War and Peace, both by Leo Tolstoy. Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Master of Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak. Mm-hmm. And Life and Fate by Vasily Grossman. Yeah. And these can be in your box. Seeing as you love them so much. I sure do. Okay, next up we have a collection of three dystopians, The Handmaid's Tale, 1984, and Brave New World. Mm -hmm. They are a vintage collection. People often ask, and I don't really know what specific collection they are, because all it says on it is just vintage, Mm -hmm. but they are really cool, so obviously keep it. Can I tell you something? Hold up. Yeah. Retract. Mm -hmm. I don't care for them, to be honest. I thought I liked them when we first bought them, but I actually don't think I like them that much. There's a little, there's a little. Because they've got that cover on them. If they if they looked cooler when you when you took that off, it's just yeah. rage, you know what I mean? And we've already got copies of each of every one of these. Oh, why are you putting seeds of doubt in my mind? We've got well, too many books! <laughs> oh, what happened there? Oh, a book. A bookmark fell from the sky. Um, okay, if anyone is interested in this collection then... I think so. I just think we've got copies of each of them books and... I do think it's a nice collection, but I just... So I really like the collection, yeah. but it is a good point that we're trying to save space know, on books, and we do have other copies of these, so... Yeah. If you want them... Hit us up! <laughs> you can have them. First come, first served. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. 
Just did you say what was each of them books were? Yeah, so it is 1984 by George mm-hmm. Orwell, The Handmaid's yeah. Tale by Margaret Atwood, and Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. And obviously, I think it would be ideal to get them as a, a set yeah. rather mm-hmm. than individually, but you know. So if you're a collector and you want the set, message me on Instagram at Kira's Connor underscore. Okay, so next up we have another little collection of these Leatherland books. Um, they're upside down though. No, they're not. Uh-huh. Well, thanks to Oh, they're not. Well, Frankenstein. Oh. Whoa. Okay. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, one of my ultimate That's faves. so nice looking. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson and The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, who we have named our cat after. Ah. <laughs> I wish there was more of them. I just there's not really that many. If there was, if there yeah. was fifty of them, I'd buy so many of them. Okay, so nice. I'm gonna pop these to one side and just figure out where. I'm where they're gonna, gonna go? Yeah. Later. Okay. Next up, we have this copy of the picture of Dorian Gray Oops. by Oscar Wilde, which I'm gonna be getting rid of because this cloth bag. I don't like it. It feels awful. Like I actually yeah. could not read this book because it just feels terrible. So. You want it? That's right. <laughs> Here we go. A third copy of Catcher in the Rye. Which Why? Is- this is my favourite <laughs> of the copies. So actually, if I was to get rid of one, I'd probably... I might put this one on the get rid of pile. Is that a, a school one that you have? No, I never read it at school. This was just my first copy of it that I bought. Oh, okay. But... Yeah, I think the other one's got cool sentimentality. And that then this one is very nice. One. So I'm going to get rid of that one. Okay. Okay. Little Women. Little Women and, and Heidi. Um, both in this Puffin in Bloom collection, which is... A definite keeper. Oh my god, I've just seen something. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Carry on. I've seen it. Carry I know on. What it is. Okay. Heidi and uh, Little Women, they obviously stay. God, they're super cute. What do you think you saw that? I saw two. Yeah, you saw two. So what's that? Seven total copies of it? I do <laughs> have a. There's two it's not even co- your favourite one. It's not even my favourite <laughs> one. Two copies of Pride and Prejudice. Now, both of these are actually m- I like them. my mum's. I like them. So I should potentially ask her if she wants them back. But um, for now, I'll keep them. Right. So. We've got The King's General by Daphne du Maurier. That's nah. a tough one. Yeah, it's not I'm really not... good. If it had some cool writing in it, maybe. I'm going to get rid because I just don't. It's not on my radar, so. Okay. And then we've got a Collins classic of Frankenstein. Oh, this was my original copy of Frankenstein, the copy that I read at school. Mm-hmm. And it's got a highlighter in it, so really might as it. well keep it. Okay. Um, right. Okay, that's two shelves down. Ooh. Nice. Okay, I can already see a few to get rid of, so let's blast it. Let's do this. Julius Caesar by Shakespeare, Hi. Another Dark Academics pick, see you later. Furies by Katie Lowe, Another Dark Academics pick, see you I'll later. Um, when No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Again, this is going in the category of a thriller, so I'm not going to read it again because I know what happens, but it is a good book, so definitely give it a read if you are interested. So There you go. Oh, Stephen King on writing, that needs easy access. Oh. Wild needs easy access. Heartshare box. Needs easy access. This is I'm really in. I'm so scared of this book. I meant to have read it in February and I've literally been putting it off because I'm so scared. So, bye. Not bye. really bye. Bye is in, it's going in the pile of easy access books. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Expectation by Anna Hope. I definitely want to read, but probably not immediately. The most fun we ever had. Love it. People in the Trees. Oh, very exciting. Easy access. The Way of Kings. Ooh, good. Brandon Sanderson is just, I don't think I'm ever going to read this book because I'm just not really that into fantasy. Uh, the Name of the Wind? Potentially. I know this is fantasy as well, but I've heard very good things about this by Patrick Rothfuss. A very, very beautiful copy of Murder on the Orient Express. Mur- uh, oh, and a similar. And a missus. Did you say Murder on the Orient Express? <laughs> Oh, I really wow. like that copy. And we have, so we have two Agatha Christie's, Murder on the Orient Express and Nemesis. Next, we've got Nikolai Gogol, uh, The Collected Tales. I mean, that is Is it? That's a surprise. <laughs> when God Was a Rabbit. Uh, yes, I want to read that soon. Mistletoe and Murder. Want to read, but obviously. Christmas. Stephen King, The Institute. Want to read, absolutely. The Course of Love. Yep, want to read that. Misery, lovely copy, I love that. <gasps> Literally, so, one of my cool top one. five books of That's ever of all cool time. It's cool so one. good. Uh, okay. Thousand Splendid Sons. Such a good book. Dr. Sleep. 
I enjoyed it. A book that some people don't like, but I, I really liked it. Mm-hmm. And everything I never told you. Really want to read oh, this Oh, more hardbacks. Oh. oh, no. The first 15 lives of Harry August. Do want to read this at some point. Whisper Network. Um, read this one recently in a reading vlog, reading Reese Witherspoon's books. I enjoyed it, but I won't read it again. Outlawed. Love this one, and I'm actually putting this one to one side for my friend Sarah to read soon, so. Okay. Have I actually been so stupid? Where did I put it? I put educated at the bottom of the box, even though I also was going to give that one to Sarah to read, so Sarah, I'm so sorry about that. She'll get it sometime. Yeah, <laughs> it'll come to you Little soon. lies. Definitely. Um, that says little fires everywhere, <laughs> but you know, that's fine. <laughs> uh, writers and lovers. Yep, lovely. Writers and Lovelies. Such a fun age. Great book. Uh, Christmas at the Island Hotel. Oh, love it. So feel good. These Violent Delights. No way. Uh, oh gosh. I was uh, with this Clockwork delights. Angel. I just have no interest in ever reading this book. I have no idea why I bought it, but it's it's going to be a good buy from me. Boom, boom, boom. You'll need a, you need a little counter at the bottom of it. Screen. Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> oh, I can't believe this. Okay, this one is a special one though, because it's Pride and Prejudice book. and a recipe book, and this one was from Carolyn for Christmas. So I that is a cool one. I, I like do that. love this one. Um it's gonna be really awkward to pack though, so I'm just gonna go off to one side. Ah pulled my hair. Okay, so spoiler alert, the next ones are all keeps, but we'll run for them really quickly. Okay. Right, I'll give you one. Okay. We have. Oh wait, there's even more on top. God, I didn't see that one. I know. All right, anyways, keep going. Dubliners by James Joyce. These are all, by the way, the Penguin Deluxe Classic. So Dubliners by James Joyce. The Odyssey by Homer, not Simpson. It's not actually a Penguin Deluxe, but it's similar. Yeah. Um, we have uh, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mr. Mark Twain. I did not like this one, but Jay did. <laughs> <laughs> the Master of Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov, which Ooh. is one of Jay's favourites. We've Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson, Beautiful one book. of my favourites. Next. Dracula by Bram Stoker, which is obviously great and such a cool I cover. I like that. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, which obviously is one of my favourites. I think oh. this is copy number three of Frankenstein that we've had in this video. Not as bad as PMP, baby. I can't believe I've got that many copies of a book that isn't oh. even my favourite book. I dropped it on Okay. Okay, here we have Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Mm-hmm. Keep that one. Yep. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Love this book. Uh, the Adventures of... No. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and also Alice Through the Looking Glass. Lewis Carroll. Four Chapters on Freedom. This is the Yoga Sutras, which I obviously had to buy for my yoga teacher training and obviously I'm not going to be keeping that. This is one of my Penguin Deluxe classics, but I do love the colour. Storm of Steel yeah. by Ernst Junger. Ernst Junger. Lord of the Flies, probably my least favourite dystopian, but still a cool book cover. Art so. wise, lovely. Um, one Flew Over the Cookies Nest by Ken Keithy, really love this one. Mm-hmm. Then we have two copies of Watership Down that by one. Richard that was Adams. Absolutely beautiful. So cute. And. The Sagas of the Icelanders, which I had to buy for a medieval Icelandic module at university, and I think we should get rid of this. Get it, get rid of it. I don't think I'll ever read it. No, to be not really. And it's that not that if Icelandic if it, history. If it had some cool Icelandic art in front of it, I was yeah. considering keeping it. But what have you done? There's a lot of books. <sighs> okay. Next. The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Mhm. Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, which if I had Love my it. way would throw in the fire. Look how nice but, it looks though. Don't you think it looks cool? No. <laughs> um, okay, Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. Possibly my favourite book cover ever. I just love it so much. Look at his little face in that box. So Aww. Cute. Um, a collection of all of the Sherlock Holmes series. I'm surprised the amount of Pride and Prejudice copies we have. I actually don't have one in this style, do we? Emma by Jane Austen, one of my favourites. That is my favourite Jane Austen. Oh. Um, the portrait of the uh, I always get this wrong. A portrait of the artist as a young man by James Joyce. Okay. And then Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Lovely. Um, Tales from Watership Down by Richard Adams, which I'm guessing you're keeping. I've never read that. Thanks. Okay. Mm. Shooting an Elephant by George Orwell. I will keep. 
The Crucible by Arthur Miller I will get rid of. One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey I will get rid of because we have another copy and I'm not particularly attached to that one. On the Road by Jack Kerouac, which I haven't read but I want to. Ooh, another collection of Shirley Jackson stories again, haven't read but would like to. And Clockwork Orange, we're keeping that until we get a really nice copy. Oh, we could just get yeah. rid of it and get a nice copy, it's up to you. I do quite like it though with the mug. Yeah, we'll keep it. I have no issue with keeping that. No, one. this could be my pile exclusive list. Let's go through this. We've got Foido Dostoevsky, uh, The Gambler, keeping that. Not read that yet. Keeping it. Uh, the Idiot, once again by Dostoevsky. Read that, loved it. Uh, Taylor Two Cities, I bought that. What is it? Dickens. Not read yep. that yet. Oh, uh, Snows of Kilimanjaro. I bought I'll that. I'll keep that, yeah. Yeah. I want to read that. Pop it in. Black Snow by Bulgakov. I'm guessing we're keeping that. Uh-huh. The White Guard by Bulgakov. Nice. Love that. Notes from the Underground by Dostoevsky. Great. Keeping it. And, and the Brave, Brave New, New World. World. Yeah, we love that. This one came with 3D, 3D glasses. Are they still in there? Still yeah. in there, yep. <laughs> so that's fun. <laughs> okay, that is two, three shelves down. Congratulations to us. Okay, let's move on to shelf numero... Um, Oh, well, I don't yeah. know. didn't know what, what language I was going to try and speak in. What would it be? What would four be in Spanish? I don't even know. Uno, Uno dos, dos, tres, cinco, 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 cuatro, 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 Welcome to the floor. Yes, we now join you from a lower part of the shelves because we're moving on to the final two, yeah. which I think is where we're going to see a lot of goodbye Cuts. books. Mm -hmm. So let's get straight on to it. So first up, I have two, three, in fact, to get rid of. Ooh. First one is... Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I read this one, didn't love it, didn't hate it, but I just don't see myself continuing on. It's a duology and it's just not really for me, I don't Stop think. Next we have Date Me Bryson Keller, which I actually read in a collaboration with Penguin for a Christmassy 24 hour readathon in December. I really enjoyed this book, but it's just not one that I see myself rereading. Mm -hmm. And then we have some Silent Night Christmas Mysteries, which I'm just not sure I'm ever gonna get around to, so bye. Bye bye. Okay, and I have a huge, 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 huge pile of books for you, which I think you're going to have some big decisions to make uh, here. So, oh, <laughs> this is the Z -Z -Z -Z. Cormac McCarthy books. Now, here's the issue is that they look very nice. However, I don't really enjoy reading Cormac McCarthy books. He has a very, so, I personally have never gotten on with his writing style, yeah. I don't think. I, so so here's the issue is that they're all very nice. I think if I was going to keep any, say if I had to get rid of them. Oh my God, I don't know what to do. This is tough. You've no pressure. Yeah. It's up to you completely, but just, you know, if you want them, keep them. If you don't want them, don't keep them. Cormac won't be offended. Right. Let me go through, right? So, that was... Cack. This one is yep. crossing. Yep. All the pretty horses. Mm. Not a fan. Yeah, uh, you don't have to keep them all, you know. Yep. Orchard Keeper and Cities of the Plain. Not a fan. No. Right, I've not read S Sutri. 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 Okay. And then I've got two copies of Blood Meridian. Which one do you think I should keep? Now, bear in mind which collection to go for so which one do you think I should keep the blood meridian that goes with this okay. one and then and get rid, get of, rid of the other one okay so no country for old men you love that, love that that's one. your favorite the favorite. road so some of these are really awkward the writing's like oh, all the way through <laughs> whereas no country for old men in the road very simply written and gets on with my very simplistic brain <laughs> Out to Dark, I made Kira read that she had no idea what was going on. I literally, yeah. it was like I was walking. I read it, I was like, Kira, you've got to read this book. I was literally like walking through the desert blindfolded yeah. Yeah. with no clue about where I was going. So I think I'll keep that one. Yep. And I'll keep, I've got to keep, su what do you say? Su Suta. Suta until I've read it. I might get rid of it. It's what a about big Child one. of God? It's a... If you're undecided, then keep it. You can always make the decision later. I think I'll keep it because it's short. 
and I read it and I was like, ah, I like the style, but I can't really totally decipher what's going on. Maybe if I read it again soon, I'll be able to figure out. Now you're all intellectual and stuff. Uh-huh. That's the same with Blood <laughs> Meridian, is that I read it very early on in my reading career. Mm-hmm. And it's a style that I really like, like a Western, but it confused me. All right. Me. Pop all right. them in your uh, Okay. So how many did they get rid of then? So I've, I'm keeping six one, and I got two, rid of five. Three, four, five. Yeah, five. That was, that's quite Congratulations. Well me. Okay, next up for me, we have... Radio Silence by Alice Erzman, which I enjoyed, but I very much don't see myself rereading it, so I'm going to pop that one in the pile. Next up, we have a collection of four books that are an obvious keep. <laughs> that is the Virago Modern Classics Hardback Collection. Um, we don't have all of them. There are lots of books in this collection, but specifically, we have two Daphne du Maurier's, Rebecca and Jamaica Im, and then two Patricia Highsmith's, which is Childhood Mr. Ripley and also Strangers on a Train. And I've read three of these books. You've read all of these books oh i have i didn't even realize that and yep. i like them so i like them all too let's see is there any space in your box perhaps? there is space in my box perchance thank you so next up i'm really sorry because you bought me this one for my birthday <laughs> i don't think i'm gonna read it <laughs> love you Put so much work in it. No, it's not good. That's fine. Okay, sorry, Jay. I do love you, but I just don't think I'm gonna read it. Um, and next up, I have this book, which um is called The Existence of Amy, and I don't think I'm gonna read this one. So, bye. Um, next up, I picked up this one called Cherry, and I think it's getting made into a film, and it does sound interesting. So I'm gonna keep hold of this one for later on. Next up, we have The Choice, which I believe is a I think this is a memoir, but potentially not. But it's about the Holocaust, so I think that'll be really interesting. Next up, we have The Power. My boss, Jen, sent this one to me for my birthday in, um, I think, like, 2019. And I haven't read it yet, but it's likened to The Handmaid's Tale, which I obviously love. So um, thank you, Jen, and I will eventually read this one. So, Okay. Next up we have Reasons to be Cheerful by Nina Stibb, which I enjoyed but won't reread, so we'll get rid of this one. And then we also have Bear Town by Frederick Backman, which I think I will keep. <laughs> Next up we have The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker, which I enjoyed, so... I like the look of it, it looks very I good. I think you'd maybe enjoy this if you read it mm-hmm. at some point, so we'll keep I think you that. read that at a similar time that I was reading either the Iliad or... Yeah, it was very Greek I was time. into the Greek style at that point, so... Okay, next we have The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor, which I enjoyed, so we'll keep that. And then we have... A f- in fact, I've got a quite a few in a row that are going to be keepers, mm-hmm. so... You're a keeper. Let's just grab a pile and chat through them all real quick. So we have The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, which is part of a trilogy. I've only read this one, the first one, but I want to continue on. Oh, you said you ate this next one. Chuck that. (gasps) How could you? This is mine by Emily Merrill, who is obviously my friend Em from the channel, A Little Writer Em. Her novel, I love it. And Jay is just being rude. (laughs) But it's all fun. So we'll keep this, obviously. 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 Shout out to Salad Pages. (laughs) <laughs> Next up we have Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen, which I absolutely love. I don't know if I love that book or if I just love it because it has a movie adaptation with Winona Ryder and Angelina <laughs> Jolie, but either way, we're keeping the book. Next up we have My Sister's Keeper by Jodie Pico. I had a period of like time in 2019 where I was reading a lot of Jodie Pico. Yeah. Really enjoy her, so probably we'll get some more of her work okay. soon. Then we have... Bye. <laughs> you scared me then. I was like, what? <laughs> okay. I was preempting you. Bird Box by Josh Malaman, which sadly did not live up to my experience of watching the movie, which was so, so good. Mm. But again, it's the type of thing where I would never re-watch that movie. Mm. So it's like a first time thing. So time? yeah, I'll get rid of the book. Then we have Submarine by Joe Dunthorne, which I really, really like. And finally from this pile, the other CJ Tudor book that I have on my shelf, which is The Taking of Annie Thorne, another really great thriller in my opinion. Oh, I like the pages on that one. That's cool. Yeah, it is cool. Okie dokie. Next up we have All the Light We Cannot See, which is another book set around World War II. I enjoyed this one, but not to the extent that I've seen some other people enjoy it. And so Mm. I think I will get rid. I've read it. I probably won't pick it up again. Then we have Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell, which is... 
about. Did you read that one? We're going for Europe. No, I read this one in the first ever reading rush that I did. Wow. So it was like 2018. Wow, so a long time, but um, I'm not going to reread this one. So yeah. that goes. And then The Astonishing Colour of After by Emily X. Arpan. I remember this book was so popular again when I very first came to Booktube in 2018. It? And it was a really great book, but. I feel like I haven't really been reading very much. I mean, I haven't picked up YA in a long, long time, uh -oh. really. And so I don't think I'll be rereading this one, though it was really, really good. The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. I'm going to get rid of this one because, honestly, I've had this one since yeah, this form and I've never read it. So it's probably not going to happen. We have A Sky Painted Gold by Laura Wood, which I really, really liked. I suddenly doubted the name of the author. But I was like, no, it is that. Okay, we'll keep that. And then we have couple of Taylor Jenkins read books, Forever Interrupted, which is my favourite Taylor Jenkins read, and then After I Do, which is Em's favourite that she sent me, so I'm definitely keeping nice. both of these. Although I do wish that Taylor Jenkins read would just go with the flow and pick book sizes that match everyone else's, because her <laughs> books are just marginally larger than everyone else's. Okay, Paper Towns by John Green, I think is going to be so long, farewell, I enjoyed you when I was 16, but now it's you know i'm not gonna read this one was again. there a film of that one or was there was a one? film of that one which was Did not good yeah it was the one with cara delavine in it it's so bad um okay call me by your name by andre Asiman. read this one last summer really really liked it the guernsey literary and potato peel pie society by mary ann sheffer and annie barrows another great one okay. and then we have <clears throat> Do you know Learn Deutsch? No, do you know Deutsch? <laughs> Which is Learn German with Stories. Simple short stories for beginners. Uh -huh. Do you want to keep Dino? I mean, it's sentimental, so I'll keep Dino. Yeah. Okay. Who knows? Okay. We okay. might learn yeah, Deutsch fine. at some point, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so we have... The first two books in the Raven Cycle series, The Raven Boys, which I loved, and then The Dream Thieves, which I hated. So at that point, I decided not to continue on with the series. Mm. And in the same vein as like John Green and Eleanor, um, Eleanor and Park and all that kind of stuff, I just don't really feel like I'm drawn to YA. Yeah. So I'm not going to buy the other two books in the series. Sense. So someone else can enjoy them for Cold you. Cold Mountain, it's staying, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay. Two books that I got very confused with at the beginning because they sound so similar and they have the most similar looking book covers ever. Okay, they One do. One day in December on, like, pencil and no, we met that? in December. <laughs> two different authors, <laughs> two different books, but I enjoyed both, so we will nice. keep them. Nice, December. December, yep. Yeah. Okay. Loveless by Alice Oseman. Again, really enjoyed this one. Similar to Radio Silence. I'm going to pass on the good book, Karma, and someone else can find and enjoy this mm -hmm. book as well. A book you know that what's we both Fight like, Club. Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk. Yep. Really, really good. I think that was good. It's such a good book. Okay, I have literally no idea what this book is about. Um, have you read it? No. No, that makes sense. And I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to. So. <laughs> was it called Heart Street? Heart Street. I really don't know. Okay. okay. So. Oh my god. We have the collection of I love them in our past Penguin time. English Libraries, which are all staying undoubtedly. Let's go through so, them. The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Far from the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Oh. Daisy Miller and The Turn of the Screw, which I'm tempted to get rid of because I I hated the You just turn said of they're the screw. all staying. I know that, but then I picked that one up and I was like, oh I hate that book. Get rid of it then. Okay. This one was so good. So good. I got this one for Jay for his birthday in November of last year. The Call of the Wild by Jack London. I picked it up basically just based on the cover. I had no idea what it was going to be about and turned out From to be a great From seeing the pick. advert of the recent film of Harrison Ford, I thought, it's going to be a goofy book about a dog. It's brutal as hell. It is really brutal. And clearly that's what you like. I like that. Okay, so another one actually to get rid of. I think there's two Okay. Here. Uh, don't skip the line. These match. <laughs> okay, so this is The Hand of the Baskervilles and A Study in uh, Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle. But as I mentioned in the Penguin Deluxe Classics, ooh, ooh. we have a collection of all of the Sherlock Holmes books. So it just kind of seems pointless to have extras um, when I don't even really like them that much. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. I've got a bio for you right here. A Room with a View by E.M. Forster. I really hated this book and I know a lot of other people love it in my friendship circle. Like I think Carolyn really loves it. I think Lucy really liked it. 
but not me. I don't like it. Not so. me. Not me. <laughs> okay. North and South Bank. I got you that. I'll definitely keep Read it. it. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, the Secret Agent by Joseph Conrad, which I read at university, and I, I read that. You know, it's, it's pretty alright. I thought it was good, and it's it's a nice cover. So, I think you got made up for my birthday actually. Mm -hmm. Where are these going? Are these going in my box? Yes, please. Okay. There's quite a lot of room in my box. So yeah, I, I know there that. is. Okay, I have Heartstopper by Alice Erzman, which I enjoyed. Bye. But I'm not gonna reread it. Yeah, got to be brutal. Got to be honest with myself. Okay. A Christmas Kiss by Vicky Patterson. And we sent this one in. <laughs> I remember when you opened that. that in a funny. box of stories. And I was like, hold on a second. Vicky Patterson so from funny. Johnny Shaw has written a book. And I actually enjoyed this one. It was a lot better than it. I expected in, you know, the grand scheme of things. But probably not a reread, as oh. is the case with a lot of just like fluffy <laughs> romances. But yeah, actually way better than I expected. Yeah. Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. Read this one last year. Really, really good. And I will keep it. Next up, The Beach by Alex Garland. Oh, got beautiful. to read it at it's some nice point. Topic. I have got to read that at some point. Okay. Not that many of my books on this shelf, to be honest. There's one more. Okay. Oh. Another PH right here. Patricia Highsmith, Those Who Walk Away. Once again, not read this one yet. You know, they're fun little fillers that Patricia Highsmith right, uh, writes. You always seem to enjoy them. I enjoy them, so when I get this one, probably will read it, probably will enjoy it, but like I said... Maybe get rid of I'm going to get rid, unless yeah. it's astoundingly good, but... Could be. Could be. Okay, Strange the Dreamer by Lanny Taylor. Love this one. You've already seen the sequel, which is News of Nightmares, but like I said, I haven't got them in a matching set. Mm -hmm. The Story Life of AJ Fickery, which I love. Mm -hmm. Such a cute story. The Song of Achilles. So cute. Really... So cute. Song of Achilles, I haven't read yet. And Circe, both by Madeline Miller. I have read Circe and so you I like really, Circe. I loved Circe, it was so good. So um I Once really again, I'd probably read them at some point. Okay, now we have two that I, I'm gonna get rid of that I enjoyed but just probably will not read again. Salt to the Sea by Ruth Sepetis, mm. which is really interesting, um, multi perspective oh, yeah, yeah, narrative yeah, that, about yeah. like uh, people trying to escape Germany towards the end of World War Two mm -hmm. when the Russian army is on the way mm -hmm. in. Really, really interesting. Yeah. Um, and a side of World War Two that I'd never actually like mm -hmm. read about before, yeah. so very interesting. And then The Paper and Heart Society by Lucy Powery. Um, really cute, really fluffy, but I think just a little bit too young for yeah. me, so I won't read it again, but it was lovely. Okay, now we have two that I will be keeping. One is Winter Girls by Laurie Hals Anderson, and the other is The Tattooist of Auschwitz. Mm by Heather Morris, which is really, really yep. good. So impactful. Um, and that brings us almost to the end of this shelf. We have then got a Teaching Yoga Beyond the Poses book, which I think I'll get rid of. Don't know where to I'll go. I'm boxed in, literally. Um, and then we have The Sourdough School, yeah. which I think I'm gonna keep okay. because we're going to have our own kitchen and who knows how much Can sourdough I, I might make. Okay, so you can't really see, but there's literally one more shelf yep. left behind us. So I'm just going to try and shuffle in so we can get this done. Now, I feel like in this shelf, there's going to be a lot of repeats of books that we have other copies of. So maybe some to get rid of, but I've seen one already, so. time will tell. So I'm going to start over here with a section of books that I know I'm going to read. So we have... Stephen King's Different Seasons, a collection of four novellas. I've read two, really enjoyed them both, and obviously want to read the other ones. Then we have Salem's Lot, also by Stephen King, haven't read but would like to. Carrie by Stephen King, possibly my least favourite Stephen King, but still going to keep it for the collection. Um, Pet Cemetery, love it. And also The Shining, one of the best Stephen Kings. So good! Oops. I don't even know what made me, what prompted me to get that, but God, it was good. Gosh. Okay, next up I have two books that I love, Eat Up by Ruby Tando and then The House on the Strand, no that's a lie, one book that I love, one book that I want to read because I haven't actually read this one. I love the concept though, yeah. so <laughs> there's that. Concept is everything. Concept is like half the battle, so. I've got a buy for you right here. Zach, Zane Grey, The Lone Star Ranger, you're gone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, we have a teeny tiny book, Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. I liked this book. Will I read it again? Mm. Highly unlikely. It's so, tough, isn't it? gonna get rid of that big pile here. 
Okay. My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. Definitely a keeper. But then The Birds and Other mm. Stories. Mm. I'm not going to... I didn't like this. Yeah, I found that I wasn't as keen on her short stories. Great Expectations. We shall get rid of because we have a m- much nicer version of Great Expectations. Um, oh, am I one? The Brother... Uh, see, it's wrote differently sometimes. The Karamazov Brothers by Dostoevsky. I'm very excited to read this one. I read a synopsis yesterday on my break at lunch, and I'm very excited to read this Very excited. One. Okay, I have a few to get rid of here. The Secret Agent, because as I mentioned, we have a different a copy, copy of this of one. one. Um, Persuasion by Jane Austen, I have a different copy mm. of. Um, Dubliners, one. we have a different copy of. Yeah. And then The Mill on the Floss, I don't have a different copy of, but I don't see myself rereading this yep. one, so. Yep. Here Mills. we go next. We've got Talented Mr. Ripley. Boom. We've got Ripley on the ground. Boom. Boom. We've got Ripley's game. Boom. Boom. We've got, what's this one? The boy who followed Ripley. Boom. Boom. And then we've got Ripley on the wall. If you don't know, this is the Ripley series by Patricia Highsmith. It's dumb fun. I like it. <laughs> you know, if you're a sophisticated reader, it might not be up to your standard. But I liked it. I liked it too. That's not me claiming yeah. myself as a sophisticated reader, but I think it has wide Strange on a people. train. It's part of the same collection and I like it was alright it wasn't the best but it was alright <laughs> and then The Cry of the Owl I actually really like this one it's mm-hmm. part of the collection I probably would actually read this one again yeah so. well that's nice okay nice. Handmaid's Tale obviously a firm firm favourite of mm-hmm. my whole life Next and we up, need a copy of we're getting rid of the other one yeah um, okay there's a couple of yours there Ooh. so I have The Iliad by Homer I don't think is this the only copy of The Iliad I have I think it is isn't it? I think yeah. I've got a copy of so Iliad, uh, I can't remember which one I like better. I think I like the Odyssey more than the Iliad, but the Iliad's still a good. And, okay. and then I've got The House of the Dead by Dostoevsky again. I don't think I've read this one yet. No. Um, okay. Tess of the Dobervilles by Thomas Hardy. Haven't read yet, but would like to. Um, Oliver Twist. I don't really like this copy, so I'm going to get rid and maybe get another one in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and then fun. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Obviously have other much nicer covers. So that goes away. Same goes for The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We have a nice that cover. That so good. Sophocles, which is a collection of three Theban plays. I read that at university and I won't read that again, so that can go... Dracula, I've held on to this one for sentimental value, but honestly, like, Gatsby, have some respect, sir. Give up. I don't think I'm going to reread this one, so bye. Um, okay, this one's for you, and so is this oh, one. These two are scary. <laughs> I want to read these at some point. How does it say this? Don Quixote. In? Don Quixote. Um... <laughs> Uh, I want to read that at some point. It's referenced in so many, especially Russian classics, they always talk about this book. It's like such a big thing, but it's, it also is physically a big thing. So, And then next, an even bigger thing, which I might even start off next month with, is The Count of Monte Cristo, mm. which is crazy because it has 1,223 pages. So that's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. Okay, we have And the Mountains Echoed by Khaled Hafsini. Haven't read yet, but I do like A Thousand Splendid Sons by this author, and I would love to read this one. Next up, we have The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. Haven't read this. No, that's a lie. I have read this one. Won't reread it. Um, I'm having to like put the books to one side now because the box is full, and that can be a problem for later me to sort out. Next up, we have The Poppy War by mm-hmm. R.F. Quang. Haven't read this one yet, but I will probably at some point. The Colour Purple, really good, obviously. Very well <laughs> critically acclaimed. Great book, keeping. And then we also have The Pact by Jodie Pico, which is a really good book, and I'm also keeping that one. Next up, we have a pile of books I think I can get rid of a few from. Mm-hmm. So, oh, this is for you. American Psycho, I'd completely even forgot about this book. This is a great book. It's such a lovely, like, understated with a little, like, fingerprint of blood in the bottom corner. Beautiful, and it's, what is it? It's a Picador classic. classic. Yeah, Thank they do have some nice covers. Okay, we have one. Trumpet by Jackie Kay. I read this one at university. It was really good, but I don't see myself rereading it. We then have... Another one from university, The Woman Warrior, which again, I will pass on to someone else. The Lovely mm. Burns by Alice Siebold, really good. I love mm-hmm. this book. Keeping that. Mm. And then we have some of, mm. these are all yours. Mm. Oh, they are, oh my yeah, God. They are. Okay, here we go. This is where I get a little bit tough. So I have Owen Wister, The Virginian. It was just Naya, and it's like, the co- I, I quite like the cover, but it's like, would I read it again? Probably not. Uncle Tom's Cabin, once again, I liked it, but it's like, do I want to read it again? Probably not. 
And then this is probably the same for this one, but I've not actually read it yet. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. So I'm going to keep this until I read it. And then I actually do quite like that cover. It's quite nice. Mm -hmm. But I'll probably get rid of that one. But it's for now, it stays. Okay. So next up we have The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Definitely keeping. Paperweight by Meg Haston. Haven't read, but would like to read. So that's Thing. Mm -hmm. The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Mm -hmm. Haven't read yet, but I'll keep that one. Station Eleven. Haven't read. Would like to. So it stays. Yep. The Ren Hunt. Have read, did enjoy, won't read again. <laughs> Agatha raising a spoonful of poison. I want to keep this one <laughs> Do it. just yeah, for the, be fun. the lol this factor. Be fun. Okay, A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. Didn't really love this one, so that one goes this on. This one's the... mine. Not read this, this is one to read. To Die in Spring by Ralph, uh, what did I say, Rothman. Want to read this at some point. It might be one that I get rid of once I read, you know, because it's gone, mm -hmm. but I need to read it. There's so many books that are ahead of it in TBR, so it could be. Years, but yeah, you know, at some point, that's how books work. Love Letters to the Dead doesn't really pique my interest. I think I was sent this one, and I, I don't really have any interest in reading it. Um, I was born for this by Alice Erzman, like all of the other Alice Erzmans, really lovely reads, but not one that I'd want to reread. Mm. Robert Harris for you. Now, this sir. is the trouble, Kira Foster. Which of the two copies do I keep? The one is right here. You can help me decide. I have. A gold one or a red one? Which one do you like better? Gold. Keep no, got... red. Keep the red. I like the... I think yeah. the red one has a more striking design. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I, I think say. the gold one is the one I originally had. I think the red one just stands out a little bit better. So, mm -hmm. uh, oh, you've yeah. got another book of yours. Oh, you know what? Oh, it's a bit mucky, but... um. Keeping it? Yeah, I was thinking about maybe not because there's a few other westerns that I read that I'm just like, uh, but I actually read this one and I actually really, 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 really like this one. So I think I will keep, and this is the same offer as one of the other ones, but for some reason mm -hmm. this one was really good. So I think I will keep this one. Okay. I have three books to get rid of now. The first one is Beyond by Georgia Springate. Um, a nice little YA, younger side of YA book. I was sent this one for a review and it was lovely, but um, not one to reread for me. Um, the next one is The Distance From Me To You. It's got an English title, but as it turns out, it's actually <laughs> in German, which I did not realize until it arrived, which is kind of interesting because obviously I am learning German. So of all the languages to be sent, I was like, yep. that's quite ironic. Good, but nice, yeah. way, way, way out of my league I mean, in terms of like, understanding. You struggled even just reading Harry Potter and it's like, you've read that book so many times first time around. So to read something like that, which you don't know how complex it is, yeah. it's going to be so not going to happen. It's going to, you'd have to be so dedicated to learn German and it'd take you a few years before you could even get Yeah, that point, so, but. and so then was, What I Lost by Alexandra Ballard, great book, but not one to reread for me. And now we are onto our oh final, my God. final pile. Okay, let's get this done. Mm -hmm. About a Boy by Nick Hornby, absolutely keeping, love that book. Mm. Um, Between Shades of Grey by Ruth Petties, haven't read this one yet. And I'm not sure, I don't think I'm going to read this one, so I'm just going to pop that one on the goodbye pile. Uh, I've not read this yet, so I guess I'll keep it. Uh, Anthony Bevor, Berlin, The Downfall. Great. Okay, well, keep that, that until I've read it. I love um, it too, Me The too. Cruel Prince, obviously gotten rid of Wicked King and... Queen of Nothing, going to get rid of this one as well. Enjoyed the series, but not going to read it again. I think I was gifted this as well at some point. Edward Sturton, Cruel Crossing, Escaping Hitler Across the Pyrenees. Is the Pyrenees the ones between France and Spain? Maybe. You think I know? Uh, I'm going to read that at some point. Might get rid of it. What happened there? Oh, that one's a recipe that. book then. Yeah. Okay, next up we have Born to Run by Christopher McDougall. Now, in any other circumstance, I would have said, yeah, I'm going to get rid of this book. Why would I want to read this book? But recently I've been getting into running. My dad's recommended oh, this one. I actually thought um, I got rid of that, to be honest. Yeah, I thought so, but it turns out it was just hidden behind a load of other books. So I'm going to keep this one. Hell yeah. For future reading and inspiration. Looking for Alaska. And the reason I jump, gonna get rid of both of these. Um, the Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, incredible book, gonna keep that one. And then A Distant Shore by Carol Phillips, another one that I read at university, enjoyed, but probably wouldn't reread for fun. Mm. And your book? H, 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 and a few more H's by Laurence Binet. I actually probably would read maybe. It's Binet. Binet, <laughs> Binet. I probably would read one more time just because I thought it was a really... I don't know if it could be really classed as fiction or non-fiction, but his writing style was really good. I'd probably read it one more time, but like, okay, I've definitely got my fill of what he portrayed there, but really, really good book. When I first started reading, my niche was 
World War II books and then yeah. I kind of moved from that. But it is fun to look back at what I started with. And then to conclude the experience, we have a few um, books that are not our typical books, but maybe we'll keep some of them. So first of all, we have a vegan desserts recipe book, mm-hmm. which I think I might keep, you know, getting a house, getting a new kitchen. Maybe I'll get all experimental and make some fun <laughs> things. Uh, vegan on the Go, which yep. is another vegan recipe book. And finally, in terms of recipe books, Feed Me Vegan by Lucy Watson, which I actually went to Waterstones to get a signed copy of uh-huh. and she did like an event. That was a lot of fun, so I'm keeping that one. Um, and then finally, to conclude the entire experience <laughs> for you, Jay, We've saved the best for last. Woo-hoo! It's harmonica for dummies for when I bought a harmonica and, and I thought I dummy. could learn. And I'm a dummy and I'm also dummy because I'm never going to learn the very simple instrument. So unfortunately, <laughs> harmonica for dummies is thanks going. whoever bought me this did you buy me that i bought you it for a joke oh, yeah for a joke it's like if, if even if i was gonna read it uh, learn how to do it i don't think a book this would even be <laughs> it was a funny joke present so, okay is that, is that the show that's from? literally the wow. whole bookshelf so now Jeez. i'm gonna tot up how many books we've actually gotten rid of so wow. catch you in just a second with a concluding total okay so we managed to take those bookshelves from being triple stacked in some places to completely empty and now we have then restacked the shelves with the books that we're getting rid of the total amount of books that we have unhauled today is 110 books which i'm very happy with i feel like that's a decent chunk of our collection we've now gotten rid of and made room for hopefully newer books and for our new shelves in the new house to not be completely triple stacked immediately so i'm very happy with that and basically just because we're still in lockdown and non-essential shops are not open at the moment charity shops and places are not open so we're just putting these books back on the shelves until we can dispose of them however i'm going to do a series of stories on my instagram over the coming days basically just to list all of these books and essentially offer them to sell for like way way cheaper than you'd get them in bookshops and just covering the cost of postage so of course if you're interested you can go over to my instagram if not that's totally fine as well but wow what an experience if you've managed to make it through this entire video big big thank you from both me and jay because wow what an experience this has been i feel like my hair has tripled in size since the beginning of the video but oh my god I feel relieved that we've now packed up all of our books and removed so many from the collection. So thank you so, so much for watching and we'll see you next time. And very, very soon there will be an exciting bookshelf organisation video. The video I've wanted to make since I started BookTube but just haven't been able to do. So that's something to look forward to.